Hail Satan fuckos. Welcome on in. Thank you very much for the resub pineapple. Been around since the beginning. Love you, dude. It's good having you in. Hello, hello. Um, welcome on in. How are we doing, fuckos? Welcome, welcome, Hell Satan. Oh my god. How are the vibes? I will why are you telling me to hydrate already? Jesus Christ, Hail Satan, Lilith. Welcome, welcome, Hell Satan Yannick. I know things are muted right now. It's because of the weird way this game is. Now the first thing, the first fucking thing. No, I told you, I told, no, Mimey, I told you to remind me to get a sippy emote, which I've got to add to my list. I'm going to do that right now. I have a, I have my convenient bite.exe official merch right next to me. Uh, it is a, a handy notepad and I'm going to write sippy emote and remind myself. Thank you very much. Anyways, how are we doing? Welcome, welcome. You did both well. I can only see one because I'm a good streamer and don't check Discord during my streams. Thank you very much, okay? But I do appreciate the reminder, appreciate it. How are we doing? How have the vibes been this evening, this weekend, this lifetime? I am toasty. Like it is actually a little sweltering right now. I have had to bust out the, the fan. So kindly gifted to me a year ago by Ellie. God, what were we playing back then? It was like Earthbound. It was it was back during Earthbound when it started getting real sweltering where I'm at. And um, yeah, this this is it was a real convenient fan. Thank you, Ellie, if you're watching the vote. Um, but man, I've had a long day, productive day, getting a lot of shit done, sneaking in some time in the writing minds. Um, been rewatching Monster and trying to finish it for the first time. And I was saying this on the Discord earlier. Shout out to the Discord. Uh, it really is just, um, it really is just Baki, but for sociopaths instead of bodybuilders. Like half of that show is just people. It's just, tr you know, Baki is like half uh, strong dudes, like buff dudes talking reverently about an even stronger guy. Uh, Monster's just that, except it's 90% conversations where it's just a traumatized dude being like, wow, that kid is just super fucked up. And it's a pretty good time. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Liam O'Brien is the, the lead, uh, and he does a great job with it. Laura Bailey's in it, too, as a little kid. Um, Andy, guess what? I ain't no Andy. We do have an Andy here in chat. Hello, Fat Cat Scoot. What brings you around these parts? Welcome on in. Welcome on. Ooh, why am I getting sniffied? Well, hello, hello. Oh, oh I guess I guess y'all are, okay. Y'all are familiar with each other. Excellent. We love that. We love to see it. For Earthbound, yes. Yeah, it was my Earthbound playthrough. It was actually, shout out to DGM360 in the chat. Um, he c came up with, and you can check this out on the VODs channel. Massive shout outs to the VODs channel. Um, you can check out, um, he did actually a sprite replacement mod. Uh, so it's me, it's me in the game in place of Ness. But there are not enough uh, characters to name myself Firmth Ness. So I just named myself P Ness. And that was our character's name for the entire playthrough. It was great. Lovely experience of a, um, lo lo lovely experience of like, uh, you know, um, a JRPG classic. The one that all the indie RPGs are apparently based on, and I can definitely see the DNA in them. Servant communities quitting jobs. Oh, we got a share from that. Love to see it. <laughs> Most of the tweet in there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very sweet of you. Thank you for the promo. Yes, Penis. Penis had one hell of a journey. He grew so strong. He really grew up. We watched Penis grow up before our very eyes. He took some hits. He took some blows, but at the end of the day, he toughed it out. Uh, and erupted in power. It was amazing. It was a beautiful experience. An upstanding citizen of Eagle Land, legally distinct from USA, much like Japanifornia, which this game takes place in, I'm told. Uh, we said our fuzzy pickles. We said so many fuzzy pickles. Um, hello, Banyan. Welcome, welcome. And hello, Liz. He was indeed a real hard fella. Yeah, man. Good times. Still not, I'm still a ways away from wanting to start Mother 3 
Like, eventually that would be neat, but like, I, it is not on the radar anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> so much other stuff to get out of the way. Speaking of coming attractions, though, uh, I mentioned this on Friday stream, but um, we did finish Corn Kid 64 on Wednesday, which means we, we need some new cute, fun little indie game to replace it with for the Wednesday, Wednesday streams. Something with maybe some comfier vibes. Um, and I've been interested in it a while. And I really enjoy Caracar Benito, so uh, we are playing Bug Snacks. I just uh, got that shit into OBS like an hour ago, um, and I'm very excited. Um, I'm told I don't need to worry about mouse and keyboarding it. Just gonna bust out the controller, keep it calm. Uh, but I think it should be a really good time. Elden Ring, you want to see me that bored? Do you want to see me complain that much, Banyan? We haven't done many hate playthroughs on this channel yet. That would become very unbearable for a lot of people really quickly, okay? Um, but that's, I, I, I think it will be good vibes. And again, you know, I just, I love, I love Cara Cara Benito. I, I, I stand Sarah Midori Perry. I, I'm, I'm here for that. I'm, I'm excited. You know what they say, goats will eat anything. So my appetite is quite, quite open. Um, but Zach's cozy, that's one way of looking at I like the vibes. I like what little vibes I have seen. The characters look fun. I don't know if I'll be voicing them or if they're already voiced. I would be, I would imagine for a game that would. You remember when that was like the PS5's only um only exclusive? That in like Astro's Playroom. Uh they are voiced. That will be a nice change of pace because I've been doing a lot of voiceover these streams between this game and the void reigns upon her heart especially and corn kids um it will be nice to have a game where we're you know where things uh <laughs> the, the, the the game will actually take care of that for me good vibes we change it up every once in a while sam regal's in it lovely speaking of the critical role cast right um really fucking well oh love to hear it love to hear it um Excellent. All the bug snaps themselves are voiced. Even better. Oh my god. It's like the whole which Pokemon would taste the best, but built around it. From what I understand. And I'm excited for that. I really don't know all that much about it. Um, I think I watched a clip of some stream. It might have been Vsauce um, breaking it. But like in ways that like do not really tell me much. I know that you are what you eat and that we will go through some variety of culinary body horror. But other than that, I'm pretty much blind on it, which I'm excited. A bunger is a name I have heard and I'm excited to meet them. The characters are one of Bugs that has great strength in writing. Interesting. Hello, Chaos Fox. Welcome on in. You only cha challenge rating of only two good on you not selling yourself short or maybe you are i don't know maybe you're only showing me a fraction of your power either way welcome on in chaos fox what brings you on these parts hello partner read a clip of a bunger notification sound excellent hello russell welcome welcome good to have you here somebody turned me into a bug snack it should be easy just slap the horns and the glasses and the eyes and the flame on anything and you make it into a firm right that is uh Oh, another from Andy. Thank Andy. Promoting the stream better than I have, apparently. <laughs> what food item would I beat? Crumbtrap Supreme. Why is that even a question? We built lore around it. We've gotten art. The fact that you didn't immediately associate me with the rap is, um, frank, frankly, a failure of branding on my part, and I need to reconsider some things. Um, Actually, no, I might, if I were anything, I think I might be a cozy little toasty empanada. Now that I think about it. I mean, talk about with you. Pineapple! On the way to Barpo's fucking bachelor party, I got a crunch wrap. <laughs> Hello, Ray. Welcome, welcome. I'm sorry, I'm yelling at my friend real quick. I got, I ate, I got a crunch wrap. I ate it in your car as we drove there, okay? Pineapple. When you, yes, recently. 
I'm sorry, I need to correct the record. I'm being accused of being a liar about Crunchwrap Supremes. Oh, that's your bat. You're right, you're right. It was his birthday, your bachelor party. I'm sorry. B -b -b things meld together when inebriants are, are, are involved and, and many, many good friends and many good times. Shout out to the dogs. Um, <laughs> anyways, I don't want to waste too much time before we go into things. Yes, I would be a, either a Crunchwrap Supreme or an Empanada, depending on what we can get the rights for. Uh, but I'm going to scoot out the way. When last we left off, as much as I hate leaving that track behind, when last we left off, nobody gives a care about the fate of labor as long as they can get their instant gratification. I'm not entirely sure how it's related, but yes, I will always stand by Squidward's words of wisdom there. Uh, anyways, um, just get soft tacos. That's, that's fine. That's fine, Ray, but you're missing out on the crunch and the wrap. And you deserve something that's supreme, goddammit. Treat yourself. When we had last left off, we were on chapter five, Rise from the Ashes, done with our second day of trial when we learned, surprise, surprise, oops, the high prosecutor totally is fucking forged evidence before. Um, oh, wait, wait, I got a 10 scale rating and I will take a sippy. Um, oh, rise from the asses. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't have enough teeth for me. I'm sorry, I don't have enough teeth for you. There's a reason I took the sippy. Um, okay, quick. 10 scale rating for Moral Oral. Moral Oral is basically perfect, okay? I'm not always in the... I recently... I, I took a stab at a rewatch of it, and then I got to the episode alone, and I remember what that involves, and I'm like, ooh, I was already getting into the dark stuff, but I do not need that vibe in my life today right now. I will come back to it later. I did not come back to it. But I've watched through the entire series multiple times. It's, it's so fucking good. Nature... Yeah, nature is a... First of all, some of the best vocal performance I've I, I've seen in a cartoon, right? Um, it is wild to think that Clay Puppington is voiced by the same person who voiced fucking Baymax. Like that. Maybe the best display of range I've ever witnessed. Um, that man's monologues are insane. Help is a really phenomenal episode too. Also, the show that introduced me to the Mountain Goats and John Darnell's like maybe one of my favorite authors. Um, also, Mountain Goats are real fucking good, and they are using the absolute perfect context there. Um, if you didn't, I know a lot of people found no children through TikTok because it became a trend there, but it's real different and more oral, let me tell you. And I can assume that whoever made it a trend on TikTok, somewhere along its line of DNA, got the idea from that moral oral episode because it's beautiful. Um, Moral, only moral oral you've consumed is sewer sluts, um, as if, uh, oh, sacrifice, um, watch it. It is on, it is on YouTube. It is free. And I mean, if we're talking, if we're talking town scale rating, fuck it. Okay. I don't know. Numbers. I don't know what else it would be. Like, it has to be. Chipper's intro, intro to the mountain goes to. Beautiful. We love to see it. This is going to sound really messy because we've got Ace Attorney. OSC playing underneath it, and I'm also going to duck it a little bit. Audio jungle for the sake of uh, avoiding uh, copyright. I got to change that audio out eventually. The great rant, the, the great rant, the sacrifices rant. There is a great video on YouTube. It's like one of those same voice actor videos showing off the range. And it's the it's a clip of Baymax. And it, then it's the rant from sacrifices, um, which is a phenomenal performance from one of the most monstrous characters I've been watching monster Johan Lieber ain't got shit on Clay Puppington let me tell you ooh what a bastard man ooh he sucks so much ooh I understand how we got that way but ooh he sucks hello Catachino welcome welcome it is good to have you in thank you so much for the raid welcome hello raiders um hi hi um hello hello for those of you who are unfamiliar Oh, thank you very much for the raid, Sora Saga. Um, hi, I'm Firm. I'm a cozy, uh, comfy little, uh, culty, obscure <laughs> as hell, weirdo, Baphomet VTuber who enjoys, uh, action games, RPGs, the weird, the cult classic, the obscure. I make long-ass video essays for YouTube. 
and occasionally we voice act our way through a big old visual novel slash classic video game like Phoenix Wright right here. Um, hello, hello, welcome. Oh dear, here's the dear, a lot of y'all. Oh boy, hello, thank you very much, Mahone Raider. Welcome, welcome. Robo2, Katachino, thank you so much for the raid. It is very good to have you here. What were you up to? What were you doing? Also, scrolling, for whatever reason, was affecting the game, which is um, not what I was expecting of. <laughs> Hello, dude. Uh, welcome, welcome. Um, what were you up to? What were you doing for your stream? Um, it's good to have y'all here. Uh, please take care of yourself after your big stream. Grab a snack, grab some water. If you need to not stare at a screen for a time, I very much understand. I, I cannot blame anybody for raiding and running, but it's lovely. Thank you so much for trusting me in the first place to, uh, share your community with me as we get into some loyal full nonsense. Um... Showing off Japan picks for five hours, Ace Attorney picks included. What? But but this game does. This game takes place in Japanifornia. Cat. Uh, what are you talking about? Um. We can just pretend it's not 2 a.m. It's okay. That's when I thrive. Fallen. Uh. But I mean, if, you know, if you need to pretend a certain way, then we can live with it. We are in day three of Rise from the Ashes. I. This case has been fucking girthy. It has been turgid with intrigue, loaded with suspense and twists and false information. And as I was just explaining to the chat, we have recently learned that it, mayhaps the justice system in Japanifornia is a little bit fundamentally flawed and broken and needs to be abolished and obliterated. But that's not on us to fix. We just need to make sure that this bitch lawyer who falsified evidence and has admitted it gets off scot-free for the um, murder that she was admittedly framed for. She was admittedly framed for the murder. She did forge evidence to convict a serial killer. Definitely not the only time she's forged evidence, something tells me. Admitted it in court, yeah. I hope this fundamentally undermines the justice system, but let's get into it. After about, oh yeah, no, absolutely, Catachino. Thank you very much for raiding on in. Hello, Angel. Welcome, welcome as well. Um, let's get into this, huh? I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's yeah, just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I not well, I don't remember us being told that the police were protecting him, Mimi. Um, also, uh, as Chipper has pointed out, yeah, perjury has no consequences. Perjury has no consequences in the series because it only counts as perjury if you re-update your testimony to include the perjury and then Phoenix calls you on it. That's how it works. I'm understanding this game is basically like a couple good years of law school for Japanifornia and their system, which I'm sure is one-to-one -one with our own justice system and just as fucking broken. I, I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard of the, about these killings but me. Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh yeah, yeah, wait, Marshall, Marshall's brother got, got murked. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. What, he, he tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. 
I didn't see that one coming. We literally read a thing that said that, Phoenix. I, we, I'm sorry. Wow, we have a lot of evidence. I hope you heard me put down my, my controller and lift up my hands in vindication there. Phoenix can't read, apparently. <sighs> Wonder if Legal Eagle will react to the Phoenix right yet. Okay. I will take a, oh, I'll take a, take a hydrate. Thank you very much, Ray. Here's the thing. I still need Legal Eagle to react to the trial of Tim Heidecker. I've seen one lawyer YouTuber do it. They had a great time. Legal Eagle. This is my call out to you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going out of my way. For Watch the trial of Tim Heidecker. It's four hours of the best slow burn comedy I've ever witnessed in my life. I saw somebody call it the, pull, the, pull, the slow cooker pulled pork of comedy. And it's absolutely the truth. That is, oh, it takes its time getting into it. But my God, it's, ooh. anyways, uh, let's talk to this lady. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. And suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage, but before he could, uh, Mr. Marshall tr tackled him. Uh, then, what happened? I I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I can... I can still see it now. A permanent picture? Well, I guess we'll talk about that later. Um, I don't remember the moment when Mr... Oh god, what the fuck? So many raids tonight already! Daily on Fifi, hello, welcome on in. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all the Fifers. Um, good to have you in. Now that's a mom. Thank you, thank you. Let me show it off. Let me show it off. Hello, raiders. Welcome, welcome, Fifi. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. Maro sent us. Maro Maramage or somebody else. Thank you very much for the follow, Plasma. Hello. You want? You need a spin. We need to see a spin. We want to see a spin. There's only one way to do the spin. Um. I'm sorry, I, there's only, shit, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do some quick magic to work, uh, to, to, to mute the game. Hail Satan. Hail Satan, uh, where is it? Okay. Here we go. Y'all wanted it? Y'all getting it. I wish I could smooth this out. I really wish I could smooth this out, but I'm just, I'm just mousing it. I'm just mousing and dragging. Oh shit. My mouse had reached the end of the screen. Let's, uh, let's give it another, let's give it another quick 360. I do a spin. Go tail spotted. Hello Toxo, welcome, welcome. How you doing? That was an option. It was always an option. You know, massive testament to the folks at CD Color who made this model. This is their first ever VTuber model. I've got to show that off again. I got, I got, I got, I got to rep that. I always got to rep my folks at CD Qual uh, Color because they did a fucking phenomenal job. Um, yeah, people are always um, surprised that uh, I am indeed 3D. Um, thank you very much, Alaric, for the follow and Dalian. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, it, 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 there's some really cool, just like 
I think it's a weird shader outline. Thank you very much for the follow, Fire Eyes. Um, getting me spaghetti all over tonight. Um, hell Satan, Millie. Hello, hello. Um, yeah, no, this is full 3D. It's just, it just got that low poly style and that outline that makes it look extra cartoonish. Again, their first ever VTuber model. And I gotta say, like, face tracking alone for, for something that people, like, learn from the ground up for this specific model. Pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with it. It's lovely to have y'all in. Welcome on in, Raiders. Um, what were you up to, Fifi? What were you doing? It's good. Thank you very much for the follow. Oh, that's a... Uh, I'll shrink down a little. Yeah, the outline thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost cell shaded. It looked really cool when I was playing uh, Killer7. Um, get away, cell shading little, literally just inverting the fa faces and turning it black. The more you know, holy smokes. Thank you very much. You shot your way through. Oh, backgrounds game, but you get backgrounds game, but you get guns and Thor's hammer. The, the, I shooting your way th through sounds cool, but why wouldn't you go for the hammer? I can't imagine there are that many games that let you indulge in hammer time, right? I would assume it's real easy, but it sounds good. The spin costs us a few inches. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I shrunk on down. I shrunk on down. I can, I can size up for y'all. Ooh, here we go. Uh, let me bring up OBS so I'm like. That good, good position. Yeah, there we go. That's a ni nice little corner to be snug in. Anyways, it's good to have y'all in. We are just getting into a little bit of uh, Ace Attorney. So I'm actually going to get game audio going again real quick. Uh, but thank you so much for your raid. Thank you for choosing to share your community community with me. Big appreciate on that. Um, yeah, I've got to get ready for do your thing. I very much understand if you or your raiders, for that matter, have to raid and run. Like, you presumably just watch a cool, long-ass backroom stream. If you need to not look at a s screen or, like, watch a TV show you've been wanting to watch and putting off or grab a snack, very much understood. But if you want to hang out, enjoy the vibes, we're getting into day three of investigation on case five, Rise from the Ashes, and I'm getting right back into it right now. Casual convo about a serial killer. Yeah, Emma's in the middle of reliving some trauma, so everybody be, 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 be comfortable. It's Science Sunday. Hey, I'll say kitten. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. It's Science Sunday. It's her comfort day, and it feels bad to be bringing this up on her comfort day, but we're, we're going to work with it. We're going to make it happen. Uh, anyways. <clears throat> I don't remember the moment when, Miss, when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted the guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean, it's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true. Even though he may have not he may not have known it, Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. CA, thank you very much for the resub. Welcome on in, I hope you're doing well. Also, hello Vex, and hello, welcome on in, Llama. Hope you're, uh, hope you're having a good time. Welcome, welcome any other stray raiders who are, who are trickling on in. Um, Ed Edgeworth really was involved with falsifying evidence. I'll say it back some. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold like she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. I feel like this is giving a, a recap of what happened last stream, and I'm really thankful for it. I'm really thankful for it, Liz. What did you see in the instant that crime occurred? A dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently, I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. 
You've been through so much. Hello, Maroxai. <laughs> oh, oh, that's who you're, you're the one who brought us over here. Well, thank you. Thank you. Very sweet of you. For real, for real. Thank you for the suggestion. Everybody's been so nice to me tonight. Um, uh, also, thank you for making your way over here anyway, Llama, despite, um, despite <laughs> Twitch Mobile screwing you over. It do tend to do that from what I understand. Um, she watched her pro fellow prosecutor die in front of her, so not surprising she clammed up. Yeah, she's a bit clammy. And I, since this game was originally for pl uh, portables, it's well, well paced to do in segments. I get that, Andy. And I, I definitely agree. And I think that's been really convenient the way it's separated into very discrete segments. From what I understand, usually with portable games, you want those segments to be like the length of a car ride, train ride, bus ride, you know, we, we, these, the trial segments have been like three hours long for this one. Um, so I don't know how well paced it's been in that regard, but it's, I, I do really appreciate the pacing overall. It, it's real good. Um, anyways, <clears throat> I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. You must have been 14. That's understandable. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies and find the evidence and to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes him a tick. Wait, so she knew that it was forged evidence or what? <laughs> There's still something that bothers me about that crime. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at that time, right? Uh, that's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Well, to, call, to kill Lana, obviously. Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Uh, of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he all the run all the way over to your sister? Oh, but why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Uh, because the detective offices and the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Cross from the elevator. No Phoenix taken in for street ass questionnaire. Yeah, no, he was taken in for Billy on the street. He was asked to name two members of the Golden Girls and panicked. Um, but Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly, didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective. I better have another talk with her. Okay. I know where we're going. That's the name of a woman in pants yet. His only fallback was stab. Lana. Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul. Why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana. Emma told me about you. Oh about how you were a detective two years ago and how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details? Especially about that 
unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. So did you did you go to law school in those two years? How did you become wait? Isn't she the high prosecutor? No, that's Edgeworth, right? No, it was her. It was her. Edgeworth is the king of prosecutors. There are a lot of prosecutors to juggle here. Wait. Yeah, so she was the high prosecutor. She made high prosecutor in two years? From detective? Which I don't think has that much in the way of legal training. All right. Nepotism all the way through. I see how it is. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today. Well, the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well. Well, I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial... It really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is that at 5.15, there was no murder at the police department. Uh, tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, what Miss Starr said. About you stabbing Mr. Gunman with a knife. But Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. She's protecting someone! We called it from the beginning. Also, what would you think would be easier to do and be able to do faster? Naming 50 real-life uh, flesh-and-blood named women? Naming 50 real-life flesh-and-blood named women? I don't know that many women named flesh or blood is the issue. So I think I, I, think I fuck up at that challenge right off the bat. Um... But if you're talking about name 50 women or 100 women from the games you played on stream, when we say real life women, do you mean like any woman that I am aware of or like people I know? Because I'm not doxing myself through my my familiars. But um, I I I think I I think I could probably pretty easily name 50 real life women. Um, IRL people I know, probably. Ain't doing that on stream though. Um. <laughs> I think 100 women from games I played is a lot harder, right? Like, I played some games with some women in it, in them, but like, I don't know how many of them have that many women, right? <laughs> and how many of them I would be able to name. Uh, name a woman, Marie Curie. I did this before, I know about 60 women. Hell yeah, good on you. Mumbo number 50. <laughs> Michelle Obama, not Obama's wife. Yes, I've seen the cutie Cinderella thing that got shared everywhere, okay? Um, yeah, Boudicca, that's another one. That's She showed up in Dante's Inferno, a classic. Um, yeah, like the, That's also a real-life woman, too, though. Uh, name I can name 50 women from video games. I played every Fire Emblem game. That's a good start, Jave. Yeah, exactly. My partner said all the characters in Void Raids upon her heart. Yes, right there. Pretty easy, honestly. And we haven't, we, I don't know if we fought 50 of them, but there are probably significantly more than that. Oh, but it's 100. Yeah. Um, yeah, every character, yes, everybody's shouting out Void Raids upon her heart because it's just a, a fest of she hers, and we love that game for that, right? Um, name every woman, Whitney Houston. Well, yeah, that's, that's a speedrun strat, though. You're kind of cheesing it, right? Um, Charlie from Always Sunny, only when he's pooping, okay? Shaka Khan's a good one, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, the lady from, what was that, what was that commercial called? Um, there was like a really, the, the smoking neighbor from the, the magic bullet blender. <laughs> I don't know her name, but that's an iconic woman right there. Anyways, we're not getting derailed for this. Flow from the progressive ads? Um, what about Aaron Esurance, right? That's a... 
I learned that people I knew did not were were I I had a friend who you know I have a friend who lived in Germany around that time in her life when that commercial was airing. She was not aware of the she was not aware of the story of Aaron Insurance. But God, what an advertising relic and what a what a what a signifier for the sea change that would be the internet, right? Uh, got that herb the memory. The smoking woman for the magic bullet ad. Everybody knows the smoking woman for the magic bullet ad. Anyways, I said we wouldn't get sidetracked. Let's not get sidetracked. Um, Emma. This doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? He was the he was a de de deputy pe um he was a deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant. Damon Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. He's like a cross between Slayer from Guilty Gear and Ganondorf. With the tits out. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... To gain experience investigating crime scenes so you could use that experience in court, right? Gant's help in the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask her more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Emma Rev revealing that she was a cop makes all her motives to make sense now. Emma idolizes a lot of people. Yeah, I think Emma Sky is kind of the very definite. She's like the poster child for Don't Meet Your Heroes, right? Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Drake. Second in command? That means the investigation le lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes. Deputy Chief Gant and I share the same office and the same investigation. They even had the same office. Yeah, Drake. Yeah, we're finally investigating Drake. Um, <laughs> we led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. Naaman Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Drake that day. The investigation was in its final stages and... Oh, I, kept, I said Drake again! And Dark must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down, and then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to... the office shared by Detective... De 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 uh, Deputy P Chief Gant and myself. That's when he found me. So you were the first person to run through the scene, Lana. In appearance so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. <laughs> That's a... <gasps> Floppas. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecution Cuter Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. 
During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her after all her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident? That's right. Quite a coincidence. Hmm. I don't buy it. What are you saying? Bongs and then backstab and he was under Marshall? Yeah, yeah, no, nothing. I was thinking about it. Nothing is adding up right now. Also, saying Drake is valid. The thing... I'm, I'm upset at myself for saying Drake so many times instead of Dark, but I'm I'm proud of myself for saying Gant instead of Grant every time because I can feel my mouth beginning to say it whenever I read the word. Um, yeah, no kawinky dinks in this fucking game, Lava. What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions come as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live with the rest, uh, live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself, the chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the chief's office. The site of the final SL9 murder. Okay. Yet again, we are solving another case in the midst of the current one. Which I believe is the second time we've done this, right? Wouldn't be from here, would it? Okay, well. His parents didn't name him Joe Dark. They named him Joe. The Dark was probably out of their hands by that point. Howdy, Bambina. Oh, uh, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Yeah, sirrah, sirrah. You never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should know my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy, your cactus? Must be his pet cactus. Yeah, Phoenix and I are onto it. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry. You can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But, Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, uh, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Sure. Also, I'm being asked to rate tea? Just tea as a whole? Like, as a concept? Just all varieties of tea? A 10 scale rating that will accurately summarize my feelings on all of it? Also, why did this guy think he was getting a snake lunch? He's going to fucking jail. Did cowboys actually save, act, actually shave with knives? Only the badasses. Um, and yeah, Jave, now that I think about it, I guess you are right. Basically, every, every case... Well, did the Steel Samurai incident involve another case? I, I, it involved, there were previous murders that had happened, but I don't think it directly involved the case, like, 
Oh yeah, no, I guess we did go into cave. Yeah, it involved a death. It involved a death. The past. I don't know if yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it it had us like solving the case for them, right? Um, at least not in the way that we are here. Like it seems like we're kind of doing doing some departmental retcons on the uh, behalf of the police here. Um. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Docs, all right. But... In the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. The facts have been concealed with forged evidence. That case left behind scars on all of us. Joe Dark, the Dennis Nemesis of the Day Man! Champion of the Sun. Thank you very much for the resub, Jay. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Very much appreciated. Um The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. Um also, um, in, in, in lieu of a response from Banyan uh, clarifying, I'm assuming we're just rating tea as a whole. Pretty good. Superior to coffee. I avoid a lot of it because of caffeine. I don't often find myself in the mood for tea, but when I do get it, it hits. It's pretty nice. If we were rating T Lottle, phenomenal okay, community we'll member and server mod, it would be a 10 out of 10. But for this, I gotta be true to my heart. Yeah, I know Mimey drinks a fuck ton. I know a lot of people on the server drink a fuck ton of tea. It ain't fully my thing. I had a green tea era in college. I had a bit where I had, where I, where I, where I I had like a mug that said like it was it was a mug from my college. It said like or it was a thermos that said like number one university mom. And I drank from that because I thought it was fucking funny because it was. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would I would drink green tea while walking to classes in the morning. It wasn't a bad time. It wasn't a bad time. Um, good experience when everything lines up right. Yeah, it's not a thing I frequent. It's been a minute since I've had some, but yeah. How disappointing. Y'all just want me to rate everything 10 out of 10 and it's not happening, okay? I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. I just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he? your brother he was 27 at the time he was awarded the highest honor that day the highest honor you mean the king of prosecutors i knew it what are you looking at me like that for that's an honor for a prosecutor mr marshall must have really been close with his brother the day the sl9 incident took place that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. It... It's always focus around... We're daisy chaining this case with another earlier one again? Oh... Interesting. It was drizzling that morning. About nightfall, there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently, someone's tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. 
There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Detective DT Mega Doo Doo, yes! God, fuck. Good clip, good clip, good clip. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired, and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him, too, the commissioners would get suspicious. Oh, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean, Damon Gant and Lana Sky. The investigation lead, Damon Gant, and his second in command, Lana Sky. So he knew it was an inside job, yeah. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the... Oh, after the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? They fucking... You, based on the... Yeah. I mean, they could be. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a real... We're looking for a third Tinder pick right there. Yeah, Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. He'd never been the same since she left. Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina. But a secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret. It all started two years ago. Also, hello, Blahaj. Welcome. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, Panda? It was certainly, uh, enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Why does he do a big old pop like that out of his flask? I've never seen somebody drink out of a flask like that. That is making a show out of it. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. Yeah, no, we believe you. Yeah, no, we 100% believe him. We, no questions. Damon Gant has, Damon Gant was, first of all, he's the chief of police. So like, obviously he's going to be, you know, evil. Like, of course he's the big bad. He's the big cop. Uh, second of all, he's obviously the case's villain and has been the entire time. Yeah, we, 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 what do you miss? Mainly recap, Lahaj. Um, when you become a real scientific investigator, adios, Bambina. They're into pretending to be a sleep king where they ask you to sprinkle a little Tide powder on them and pretend it's fat. It's like knife play for cops. <laughs> okay, um, where is the chief prosecutor's office, and how do I get there? This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, uh thanks. Wow, he, he actually talked to us. Well, the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention her statement to the media in tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think, I think festive is usually the word used for those. No, no, holidays are chaotic and I hate them. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator up to the top floor. Really? 
You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right. You, you can't go in there. It's off limits. Damn it, Emma. Well, I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Uh, well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the chief's office. Sure. Yeah. Fuck it. Small fortune and CRT monitors in this room? Yeah. Well, that's... On weekends, they rent out this place for melee tournaments. It's real good money. And, you know, during the week, when the cops come back to work, the smell of bacon washes away the gamer scent. Wait. I just looked back at the screen and saw what, um, okay, there's a lot to, there's a lot to come. Wow, wow, wow. I, I, I don't know why I got Ganondorf vibes from Damon before, but this really seals it, right? <laughs> More importantly, over to the left, it looks to me like the, the King of Prosecutors award was already shattered. Oh wait, no, no, there's a sword going through it. Oh, there's a sword going through it. But there is still a chunk taken out of the, the top. That is weird. And I see, wait, the pot. In the background, there's a, the pot. I see it. This is the interface chapel. Our budget was $10 million. <laughs> Uh, this guy, this guy's moved on from a CRT. He's upgraded to flat screen already. Whoa. Where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's, that's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss Bach. How many children get to play the organ? <laughs> I mean, that is a... Oh. I never could remember where C was. Hmm? Oh, it's you two! Chief Gant! He put that paper he was reading in the desk. So, Ryo, have you been swimming lately? Uh, uh, no, I, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full, too, with Miss Ma Miss M Mr. Marshall's misconduct. And a lot of provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh. You mean about the forged evidence? Two years have passed since that incident. My, my, how time flies. See that big picture on the wall over there? That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. So this is Miss Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. More importantly, why does Lana have a fucking knife? Uh, we took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. Can't quite seem to put my finger on it though. No, I can. I can. I can point out a couple of things. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's the spear with the armor. Yeah, it's not. She's not. She's not rocking a blade. Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters of that. But there are matters that need my attention. I'm gonna lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but th this office, it, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no reason to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with, with yet, after all. Uh, that terrible line read. It seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Gant denied our request to search the crime scene. 
That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a, a clue? There's got to be a way we can get inside the chief's office. Okay, breaking and entering now. I'm assuming it won't just be like a... Hey, pal! Hey, buddy, you, you should quit. Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. Then sit. From sitting so long? Y yeah. Actually, from serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what hap of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has a whole world after his blood. Yikes. How much fucking coffee was he serving uh, during that meeting for his feet to hurt? It doesn't matter how much coffee he serves. That's not that's not what got him walking around so much. He he asked people how they want their coffee, and they said they they said yeah, I'll, I'll take it black. And they bring him the coffee, and he said, "Where's the creamer?" And he says, "Well, you wanted it black." He said, "Yeah, I want black with creamer on the side." And then Gumshoe has to go back and grab the creamer. And then turns out they never asked him for the fucking sugar. They won't ask him about it till he gets back. This is how it happens, okay? That that's how you get caught in the loop. That being said, far more honorable way to make money than uh, police. And then they want straw. Oh, they always want straws. And they will not lead with that. <laughs> But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the Edgeworth was uh, the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they, pre they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now, with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know for making... Uh, uh, there's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick, keep up the good work! Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Uh, yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, dick? Uh, yes, sir. It seems like you don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Unru oh, shit. I accidentally double tapped A. He says something about Edgeworth being under pressure. Um, just know the blue, blue badger pushing in the background. Oh yeah, we noticed it the first time we came here and uh, immediately caught the eye. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. His Final attack? You mean when he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl? She's right here. Not me. It seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. Final smash! That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Uh, well, what was it? Oh, uh, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Oh, uh, look, it's all right. I, I thought he was trying to be clever with that. <laughs> he legitimately forgot. Um, oh, I, I, I forget. Uh, look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never fail to impress. 
Maybe we should show him murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Okay. In a sec. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. A businessman? What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit, it, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So it was an accident? An accident, yes. But it transformed him into an animal. An, an animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then he killed the lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by just then, so he killed him too. Then when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came up on the scene and he killed us and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, it is all conjecture. It's conjecture that he turned himself in? There wasn't a single shred of evidence. He turned himself in! So, he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. What was the plan? Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily, Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness? AKA Emma. Wow, he really doesn't know, okay. Seems to be... Plan was to keep running and killing them, why turn himself in? Did they falsify arrest, uh, uh, evidence to arrest him by killing Marshall and saying what? If that's the twist, that is insane. And I love that they're going that hard on the anti-cop propaganda. I'm actually into that. Okay, so... Oh, wait, I thought that was, oh. Present, there we go. Um, about this. Hey, is that? It has a tag attached to it with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken m murder weapon you were speaking of. I haven't noticed dark size yet. What about them? Wait, what about them? What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. It was found in Mr. Edgeworth's car muffler. That's it. Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Uh, quick, uh, before you'd forget again. They look weirdly similar to Gantz? Maybe. Maybe he's under Gantz hypnotic control. Um, I want to look at this. Ah, I can't, I can't interrogate about specific things. Damn, Gantz really do got the titties out. They are more substantial than Lana's. Neil, we can't tell. Um, <laughs> good old Stabby, that brings back memories. This is an episode of CSI. A man accidentally kills his wife and neighbor sees. Tries to explain it was an accident, but he kills her by accident. Wait, the neighbor was an accident too? That's actually very funny. Um, that's knife. It was Joe Darks, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it too. No one actually witnessing witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't, you don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? Obviously, Neil. The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Did it match Dark's knife? Wow, that was a really long knife. If the tip was that long, holy shit. You bet. Down to the last fiber. Just the tip! <laughs> yeah. 
That's pretty, um, conclusive. Stabbed in the dark, died for a, from a punctured heart and lung. A knife tip was in the wound. Well, there you have it, in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? <laughs> yeah, hello, Zelda's here. Yeah, it's a last four inches, yeah. What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. Oh yeah, he, <laughs> Gumshoe was borrowing 50 bucks from him. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now, and his office is locked. Uh, but we'd like to have a look around if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Yes, don't you... Don't you just want the... Don't you just want an excuse to go fucking apeshit, gum Gumshoe? Gumshoe, this is your time. This is your mo- It's a Ginsu knife! Well, that's why it sli sliced so cleanly and snapped right off. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Uh oh Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. The day he immediately? Wow, they work. They work fast on. They work fast on some things. Wow, Gumshoe let us down. Gumshoe had his moment. Let us the fuck down. Oh. So in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Wouldn't you want to serve the, the justice that is the Blue Badger? This guy almost made us lose the case today. What are you talking about? He was guarding the bloodstain on that evidence locker with his life. That's more than you can say about most officers nowadays. It would have saved us a lot of trouble if he hadn't guarded it so well. I have to admit, he's right, though. Thanks to the Blue Badger, we were able to prove another possibility today. The possibility that another murder took place prior to 5.15 p.m. Yeah, I guess. Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. I'll, uh, keep that in mind. Sheesh. Oh! It's in the photo. About that jar. I think I've seen it before somewhere. Somewhere? Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from previous lives. This must be the most un uninformative detective I've ever met. There's something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Chief Gant? Where could I have seen that before? Right here. Uh, what? What? Okay. That's not showing him enough, apparently. Hey, that's it. That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got the other day. Were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got award for I got an award for diligence myself. Um, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Why does it not have the sword anymore? Uh, there's a reason. Uh, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently, he's forgotten. Go figure! Back in my old job, one of my duties was to print the ID cards from the building employees. 
when someone was fired or quit, one of the first things we did was to disable the ID card for the door system. That makes sense. I feel like death, I feel like when a death is involved, it's like a little, uh, somebody else, I mean, somebody else could clearly get their hands on the ID card. So yeah, that makes sense. Now I'm gonna have to buy the historical fiction prequel game to see if Gumshoe's previous life is present. No. Oh yeah, that is it was, what the great ace detective or the great ace attorney is what it's called. Haleen! Have a good lark. Thanks so much for popping in. Thank you so much. Haleen somewhat inspired. We, we were chatting a bit on Twitter and um, someone inspired me uh, with um, the, 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 the ad for today. Uh, they were saying that, um, they, they were saying that, like, uh, Gumshoe is, um, <laughs> um, they were saying, like, Gumshoe's a good, a good bean, even, even if he's a cop, and I was like, he needs to quit, and then uh, I remember I had seen that meme earlier today, and I was like, oh, I just gotta, I gotta throw his face on there, I gotta throw, <laughs> I gotta throw his face on there, worked out, happy with it, um, oh boy, you think this is an uh, a lot of evidence by the time this case ends, you'll have, like, five pages of it? Yeah, I got that sense. This is a lot to go through, though. Um, what can we get into his office with? Yeah, nope. Maybe we go elsewhere first. Maybe we go elsewhere. I don't have the. I don't have the photo. I don't have the photo. It would be different. I have the if I had the photo of the the crime scene. Hand over a screwdriver and ask he wants to shoot. I. That'd be too subtle for him. Attorneys and prosecutors have no business showing evidence outside court. It's taboo. Especially when the interests of both parties are involved. Bullshit! She really means it. Lana. Fuck. Okay, we're not gonna get anything out of Lana at this point. Um. Let's head to the underground parking lot. Ooh, okay, this is new, this is new. No one's here today. Not even Miss Star. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved in court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15 p.m. Yeah, I, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. But instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've got to find all the answers by tomorrow. Yeah? Not sure how we'd go about doing that. We've already done the blood scan of everything here. This rope, is it? Yep. They laid in the outline of the victim's body. So, wait. The victim must have died when the killer closed the trunk on him. <sighs> you have got to be the only person I know that would come to that conclusion. Okay, yeah, um... Nope. Raining pumpkin, man! Pumpkin's a decent flavor profile. I don't know the last time I've had like straight up pumpkin and not it like in pie form or something. Um, I think pumpkin's kind of one of the lower tier squash. If I'm if I'm entirely honest. I, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, like it's any of the things that like I I think pumpkin pie is all right. It's fine around a certain time of year. I feel like most of the flavor I'm getting out of it isn't pumpkin, is like the cinnamon and the nutmeg and the other spices you throw in there. We'll do it pumpkin live. empanadas, it. fill it with okay, anything better. Numbers. Fill it with anything more flavorful and filling. Pumpkin bread, it's all right. Please clap. Well, that's about all I'm gonna give for it. Yeah, eh, 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 eh. Anyways. <laughs> Hi, prosecutor's office room, 1202. I wonder if Edgeworth is back yet. Uh, there he is. It looks like he's writing something. What are you doing here? 
he sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. And I can see it balled up. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live that th the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? But cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. Uh, so, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. All right. Fuck, Mary kill, but especially those deranged ones where it's abstract nozzle, like, antidemons. That sounds awful. We'll do it that sounds... Fuck yeah, that's... Okay, throw me some numbers. I'm just... Yeah, no. Nothing to work with there. <laughs> Anyways. Forge evidence. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I do can erase the fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility as a prosecutor in charge. The fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why does it all come down to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First last year's trial, now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. Okay. Look at that face! Look at that face! Wow! Oh! Oh! It's not just a smile, it's the slight smile. Slightly evocative of the single pixel that that set the internet on fire. The the one pixel on Dave Strider. That, that fucked up, that launched a thousand ships, as it were. He is indeed baby girl. Um, smug death versus smug. That's not just smug. He feeling himself, right? The single pixel Riz. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. And there's the dairy. Oh, wait. No, that's the soon, not the dairy. Fuck. The dairy was what we got before. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? A list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's... Only half as long as most lists? That's odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. A picture? Something seems strange about it. Really taking Phoenix a while to pick up. We've talked about the shield being broken and everything, but all right. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered? You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Hello, Lynn. Welcome. How you doing? How you doing? Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Talking about jacking up! Yes. Just odds and ends. Bits and bumps. And <laughs> one last edge for the road. Clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. 
That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh, yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes. It was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back here to the prosecutor's office but the, because the chief asked you to? That's right. Okay, let's start showing them some shit. I think it's the shield that's a problem. It would be it makes sense that the shield of defense would be broken as a trophy for, for the prosecutor. Yeah, but the other thing is that in the picture, the shield also has a sword against it, which is also broken, I should mention. I'm doing good, Lynn. I'm doing good. It's good to have you in. Uh, you recognize this boy? Oh, wait, wait, no, no. We're not in present mode. We must present ourselves and our evidence. Yeah. Hey, you recognize this? Right, please. I'm the prosecutor on this case. You don't expect me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. I'll pass on the tea. Just tell me about the case. Mr. Wright! Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very stylish manner. Whose side are you on anyway? Maybe if I just show him my best evidence, I can get some reaction out of him. You made yourself not just fuck you, I'm hungry. Um, been craving them. There's a food truck that's sometimes near my place, and I might have to pick that up tomorrow. Okay, let's just go right to it. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. She's jealous. She's jealous we got invited to tea. That's it. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Uh, speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes. The trophy that Mr. Marshall is holding, it's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Ah, uh, I remember now. Oh, he's been a sneaky boy. Remember what? That was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. A story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Is it, is it, is the sword the objection that is smashing through the shield of defense? More importantly, what's really fucking me up about this... The, the edge of the shield does look like it's been straight up broken off, right? It does not have the smooth finish that the rest of the shield does. So do they just like have somebody kind of smash it? Do they, do they make a do they make a full on shield and then just smash it every time? Eating teriyaki salmon for dinner. Everybody's committed to making me hungry tonight. What the fuck? Yes, I'm craving nachos. And yes, it's because of fucking corn kids. Noisy. The corn was the chips in the nachos. Noisy. I need my hint of not hint of lime, damn it! This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Oh, that sure. Everyone knows that. What? What? Why don't you tell it though, for Emma's sake? Very well. Man, I just had some raviolis and some meatballs, and it was fine, but now I want, now I want something more substantial. Long ago, in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. I wonder where this is going. 
Mm. Wait a minute. Those claims contradict each other. Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard this story before. Right. Anyway. Oh, he know. He totally just caught out Phoenix in the lie, and he is so sneaky about it. The smirk! Anyway, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this, this out, the merchant was left speechless. He really hadn't thought that far ahead, damn. And thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Oh, I see. So the chip shield and the broken knife symbolize? Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. And that's what science is all about. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the ward abolished. Chief Gant. Okay. Interesting. So can I just pick this up without you noticing? I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright, let, let's take a look. Are, are you crazy? Edgeworth is sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Come on, Ed. Phoenix. Use your body. Use your use your use your masculine wiles. Uh Hey, Edgeworth. Oh shit, he's actually doing it. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window? Oh no, he's falling to the ground! Hold on. First, let let's me see what this dude's- <laughs> This girl's doing crawling around my feet. <laughs> he didn't even look. God! Yeah, that is 100% the start to several fix. What? Letter- <laughs> If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says letter of resignation. He's gonna become a defense attorney. But that is not what I was, I meant between Edgeworth and Miles, Mimey. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean, I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. I'm talking about Phoenix distracting Edgeworth, Mimey! Get your brain out of the gutter! <laughs> but, but Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. Oh, Edgeworth and Ma yeah, sure, th yes. The, the, the Edgler, as it were. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright! Please, you have to do something! This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. Great instincts, Phoenix! Admit it into evidence, Phoenix! Submit it to the court, Phoenix! Great boyfriend material right there. Okay, well. Um. Oh, but I know who we can show this to and put him in a real panic and maybe get into the office. I don't know what this voice is supposed to be, so. Excuse me. Oh! Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? <laughs> Why would you wrap it in like a banana leaf like that or whatever that is? That sounds... 
God, I just thought Clay's pupping to someone's Blorbo. There are some people who are... I don't know about Blorbo, but there are some people who are into him, yeah. Beef. Yeah, my favorite character from the, uh... Uh, Phantom of the Paradise. Beef. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star. I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due for transferal. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, that little scene I happened to witness? Oh, peace, peace, Andy. Have a good day. The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. Is she telling us she has beef with us? Or with Lana? Miss Star's hatred towards Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. Yo, Doc. That's a name I'll not soon forget. Most food is supposed to be savored when eaten. That's the point. Yeah. Unless you're trying to speedrun head like a, like a brain freeze with a milkshake. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the Paresha. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Old Jake Marshall, though, must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made him all the more desperate. Her? Lot of sky. My sister? The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course they were led by that legendary duo. Lana. Lana. And Chief Gant. Wait, what was going on for half a year? Was she saying she was on the case for half a year, or...? That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You mean with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Doc got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. But he said he turned himself in. Yeah! But the fact that he turned himself in throws a real wrench in a lot of these gears. But, but you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us saved Goodman were relieved of our duties. Move without even so much as an explanation. And then Lana Sky transferred the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. Then why are you participating in this uh, frame job? She was being used? Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Gant led the investigation with Lana second in command. They were the best. D Lead spelled in the past tense does not have the A in it. Game! I, I'm not, it's not ruining the experience for me, but I will point out a typo, typo when I see one in a video game. <laughs> Capcom! You did this during fucking, <laughs> fucking Ghost Trick 2! 
They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Name and Gant's magnetism from in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? And by that I mean his titties, son. <laughs> Okay, I won't ad-lib anymore, I'm sorry. By that I mean his ability to tr attract evidence. He'd produce the most incredible evidence in the cases he had handled. Incre incredible evidence? You mean, oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. It wasn't if it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Starr. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why'd she have to turn so cold after that? Drama. Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief. That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position as chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude there must have been a reason for her change. Last, I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Rookie. It makes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. That line goes hard. That line goes a little hard. So. Gumshoe. Did you know that 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 cute edgy boy that you've been uh watching over? You wouldn't want him to resign, would you? Oh, you're back. You're still here? I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. We don't see her, the, the, the sprite of her with the glasses on often enough. It's really cute. Is my, oh, my music is still going. I thought I had muted it. I, I had muted it, but it, ha, ah, yeah. Thank you. My music, it, it's been muted this entire time, but like it was still playing. That doesn't really do, it, do anything other than, you know, it's gonna throw off my Spotify uh, end of year stats, but fix. Yeah, thank you for letting me know, Mimey. <laughs> Never noticed, it's all the way up in the corner. Hello, Arrow, welcome on in, how you doing? I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. Huh? I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. 
there's got to be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Yeah, I'll like, give him this. Oh, what's this crumpled up piece of paper? No, no way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I, I can't believe they pushed him this far! Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice, too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I made up my mind. But, but... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that if someone found out. They, they wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. Hey, Cab! What? So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake. All right, detective. Thank you. I hope this case ends in Edgeworth resigning anyways and becoming a defense attorney. And Gumshoe can be his... human furniture or whatever, I don't know. Whatever pays the bills and provides a roof over his head. Back in there. But is Edgeworth friends with you? Death Jock, he's gonna be jockeying something that starts with a D, I'm gonna tell you that much. Here goes, Mr. Wright. Edgy going on a self-discovery, having a little sabbatical. Hail Satan, Pokey, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. We're in. If anyone finds us now, Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. Don't follow us in! Ah! Ah! Sorry, I, I, I thought you were a ghost. I, I didn't know, even know you could slap a ghost. Ah! This is Detective, Detective Gumshoe! Well, what are you doing sneaking up on us like that? It took you long enough, Phoenix. Uh, I, I wasn't sn sneaking. I, w I was just worried something might go, go, go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, then what's, what's the point in giving us your ID card? Then... Jump shoes ID crushed and rendered unusable in pocket. <laughs> We're in it for the long haul. Hey, don't do that to my card. Wait, why would you do that, Phoenix? Asshole move! <laughs> I hardly ever get a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have a look around myself. And besides, we're all in this together now. You really do want to get fired, don't you? <laughs> Not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. Ooh, okay, we can talk, we can talk, we can talk. That desk on the other side of the room, was that your sister's? Yes, uh, that's where I was waiting for Lana. On that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. It's entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. Let's hope he preserves this one. That's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk. No one except Chief Gant. And the cleaning lady who's in here every morning. 
Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. Why does it feel like part of Dracula's castle? I think it might have something to do with the organ. I think it might have something to do with the organ. It's a sneaking suspicion, but I think it might have something to do with... Maybe the stained glass windows, but it's mainly the organ. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? I mean, it's one of the SL9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah. You wouldn't be... No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now then, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. No, not so fast, buddy. Huh? Well, what is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. Jesus Christ, Gumshoe, what is your love language? Interrogation? You just gotta let, let it go at that. But sorry, this guy's starting to get on my nerves. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think. Chief Gant might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What, what, what do we think of him? Oh, he guilty as fuck. Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yet. There you go, ignoring me again. Yeah, none of this neurotypical nonsense. Spit it out, man. Don't let... Don't make me wade through eight layers of social cues here, motherfucker. Just out with it, out with it. You can see pretty far from 15 stories up. If you were to drop that suit of armor from here, at first the chief wanted to use stained glass for this window. Really? Why didn't he? They say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. Oh. Stained glass or not, it's, it's a huge window. This is a real deal, isn't it? Th this armor and these weapons? Sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations, except for when it comes to his evidence. Oh! First the pipe organ, now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? I'm glad we're addressing it. What? You mean we're paying for this? Ooh. Ooh, Emma's about to learn something real spicy. That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. I don't care who the IRS sends. You don't have any taxes to pay. Shh. Be careful what you say. Who knows? Chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out! You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. This is a safe, isn't it? It looks like something we can maybe be able to zoom in on and unlock later. Well, if he's the one playing the organ diegetically, it's... again, it's the Ganondorf vibes. That was the most baller thing that Ganondorf ever did. He was actually there playing the fucking organ the entire time. It's, it's a great reveal. Safe. That word, that word is rife with intrigue. Uh, okay. If you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered on this panel to open it. Seven-digit number. I think I just might know what it is. Or mayhaps we already know it. Wait, seven digits? Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know! You want to try my birth date? It's... I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. Ray, you might have been you might be joking, but that's actually what I'm thinking. Booyah! <laughs> Fuck 
off. Because, you know, we saw the ID card. We No, we saw the ID card. We saw the, or not the ID card. We knew that somebody in the department had a number of all sevens. And I assumed it was somebody high up in the department because naturally that's like a master key code right there. Um, and let's be real here. Damon Gant is absolutely sneaking into the evidence room at 420 to sneak away from his, his fellow officers. Oh, oh, it feels good to be mildly observational. <laughs> Bingo. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? Seven, 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 seven. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean... Seven 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 seven. That ID number. I, I think you're one seven seven shy this time. I thought it was too much, too many. This can only mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Hey, anyone care to look inside? I think that's a great idea, Emma. I think that's a wonderful idea, Emma. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's... Uh... A shard from a broken cup. It somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? I wonder! There's something else in here, too. What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth, and somebody was getting that good dick. <laughs> Well, Emma? This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think the chief made up the design? Uh, I, I, I don't think so. Oh. Well, it was just, just, just a thought. Is that it? Is this all that was in the safe? Or all that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. And a broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great. Now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Obviously. Come on, there's gotta be something we can show the detective. Okay, yeah. Hey, buddy. You think he would have disposed of the evidence in a better way? He needs to keep a trophy, though. That's, his, that's always their mistake. They want to keep a trophy. Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Ah, those were the days. It was yesterday. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right. One of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know... That fragment we just found? You mean this one that was in the safe? Yes, that one that was in the safe. <sighs> oh. Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells. <laughs> Let's see if it fits. Yes, obviously. Oh my God. I'm pretty sure it's gonna fit. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. Oh boy. Did we get it? I will look, I will look, I will look. I'm scared, I feel like I might have fucked it up. <laughs> There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means... 
Chief Gat willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. Wow, that was fast. Only because I'm very smart, Liz. But... Hey, guys. Get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. Yeah, I'm expecting G Gant to show up too. Yes, 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 absolutely. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line. It's very obviously some like kanji that was not completely writ scrawled out, right? That's blood. I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? It's totally kanji, and I don't know how they're going to work us. I don't know how they're going to walk us through that in this game for the localization, for the sake of the localization. Um, can we, is there, oh, wait, nothing else we can get from there. Um, We got that. We don't have the... We don't have the... Can we use this on the... Cloth? Detective Gumshoe. I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. All right, go to town. Sheesh. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead. Take my fingerprints. Uh, um, it, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Yours are definitely on, on, definitely already at the station, right? They've already got that um, <laughs> locked away. Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about that cloth we found in the safe. Yeah, I was hoping that's where it would get us. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? Yeah, yeah, good cover up, sure. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. And once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times that my mom was always reminding me how to dust for prints. <laughs> Hello, Short. Welcome on in. All right. Let's get this over with. Let's get a nice all around town. And we blow. There we go. Hmm. I gave it my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? But it doesn't look like we'll get a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger then. Gumshoe's only failing is that he's a cop. Yeah, it's a pretty rough. I'm guessing this one out of all of them. It actually is middle finger time, yes. Shouldn't we be putting this in the heater with super glue? If this is a reference, I'm not familiar with it. No, we just dust. We just dust. With our science powder. I too would love to be on the 3DS. What if, what if the only way you could communicate with people in your life other than in person was through Picto chat? Is actually just coke. Well, they have a lot. They have a lot hanging out at the station in the evidence room, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gant is one hundred percent the person who attacked Emma. Well. Prove the connection! No. How can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? 
Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old. Don't spare her on this one. It's obviously Gant's fucking coat. They aren't, they aren't uh, clear enough to get a match. Oh, that, that's too bad. I, I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Hey, you. Over here. What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing inside the chief's safe? D don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. No! What are you, a CW drama? Shut the fuck up and let the pro plot progress in a way that makes sense. Don't... Don't hold out on key evidence from somebody just for the sake of convenience. Fuck you. This is a drama. It's not a CW drama. They don't have to be that lazy. They've been way better than this. They've been way better than this. Oh, that's how they collect fingerprints on certain substances. Oh, interesting. Yeah, didn't realize we were in fucking Riverdale. I was thinking like The Flash or some shit. Live action CW The Flash. Here. Uh, maybe you should hold on to this. Piece of cloth folded in and added to the court record. I wonder if folding it fucks up those fingerprints. Um. Okay, let's see what else we can check out. Emma, you gonna you gonna talk about how this desk is a site for sore eyes too? Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh, it's you two! Uh, Chief Gant! He put that paper when he was he was reading in his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this, though. Yeah, Miles was pointing that out earlier. Hello, Hoodlum! How you doing, my crab man? I will take a big sippy. We already checked out the uh, the, the, the armor lodge a little earlier. Hey, look at the case name! Huh? SL9 incident. I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, about evidence lists. Normally, they're twice as long. That's right. Uh, I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-size list of evidence. A list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! Uh, the chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Evidence list added to the court record. Well, was I any help? Of course! Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Ah, Chief Gap! Oh, we didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happen to look out a window and see the stray dog run straight into a pole. Just then, I thought of a certain detective. Do you mean... Uh, me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Y yes sir uh, sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Uh, me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. Uh, but, but, sir. Oh, yeah! Now get out! Y y yes, sir. Oh, we did it, 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 we did it. 
We have solved the one bad thing about Gumshoe. He's no longer a cop. A cop. The ad came true. I predicted it. We'll be on our way too then. Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. Me, sir? I'd like a word with you. But, but sir, I, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair. You're free to go. Do not leave her alone with him. I know we were just saying don't treat Emma like a fucking child, but do not leave her alone with this man. The man who tried to murder her. Mr. Right. No, no. God. Stranger danger. Come on. Look, pal. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. B -b -b no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office. I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why is she kept eerily silent about it all this time? Anyway, are you listening to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the chief again. Later, pal. Hey, but Emma? After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. Do not let her, do not let them keep you overnight. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Oh boy. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I've finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is a term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to tell, 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 uh, to get her to tell me the rest of the story. She is underage. She literally needs an adult for questioning unless 16 is age of majority in Japan, California. I mean, I know if it's in Japan, the way they do it is like by precinct or like whatever the, the districts of Japan are. Because like, I know some places it's like as high as 20. Um, <laughs> he thinks I'm thick. Y'all, do you think Grant cares? Do you think Grant cares about what? Do we think Greg cares about... Oh, Gant, Gant... Uh, I finally did it! I finally said it! But it wasn't in uh, dialogue, so I'm happy. It was just me reading chat. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, do, do, you, do we really think Gant cares that much about the fucking law when upholding it? I have to admit, I was more than a little per perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say? So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, 
Who, may I ask, is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of. What is this person's name? Clearly Meekins. Well, Miss Sky. Mr. Wright. You are addressing the Chief Prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable... Uh, assu assuming, assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Uh, Chief Gant? Stop acting fucking surprised, girl! You know we know! Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was me. I had access because I was in second I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. I mean, right off the bat. I just found this in a safe in the chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. It's as you surmised. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the, the trunk of Miles Edwards' car. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edgeworth's car. Everyone's a pawn, and Gant is the pawn of the president. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? Y you mean Edward's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edgeworth's knife? That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not Joe Dark, it's Joe Biden, or more, more, more specifically, Dark Brandon is who's behind, been behind this the entire time. She stabbed the dead. Well, that's not a crime if he's already dead. It, it's probably defiling a corpse on some level, but it's probably, it's not murder. And that is the reason for the bandage on your right hand? Yes. 
It seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. The star, huh? Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that by whatever means possible. So, you hid Dark's knife? The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right. Then I call my sister. To tell her what happened and to ta ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. Uh, that would explain why Emma is so confident about Lana's innocence. And speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? Well, the truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first things I did was make a phone call. A phone call to patrolman Jake Marshall. To Marshall? Why, why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or, at least, I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean, not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card. Well, it seems he hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room? I like I like that we're getting some mysteries fully resolved before we are like, got this one laid on us. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, you earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now, please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's, Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murder. And, and what went down in the chief's office two years ago? I like that she gently spins throughout the entire thing. It's like the uh, the walking in circles scenes from Fate Zero, but just one person doing it to themselves. Okay, so I'm guessing trial former. Yeah. Okay. Final day. So here's the thing. It's still a good bit before we normally wrap up stream, but I feel like we want to jump into this trial and just like really get into it right really sink our teeth into it. i don't want to i don't want to start this trial and then conclude it another night right um but i kind of keep wanting i kind of want to keep streaming for a little bit i kind of want to keep streaming for a little bit right that seems like a good fun time so i think that the most sensical thing to do it would be a cool for no that's what i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking that the, like that trial is probably our final trial. Fi probably our final trial. Uh, Void Reigns, we did just play some Void Reigns, is the thing. So I don't think of that. I think we switch games. I think we do a little fusing. I think we just do a couple fuser sets. 
I think we do a couple little quickie fuser sets real quick. Right? Just to jam it out. Just to have some chill times. Some fun times. So we give you some lurking. Um... So, fuck it. I'm going to get that going real quick. Uh, quick reminder, if somebody could... Oh, thank you, Mimey! Yes! Yes! Oh, man, Mimey's on it. Yep. This right here is my sweat.